Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Koros 2015 World Table Tennis Championships in Suzhou, China. This is the women's singles fourth round. We are in the round of 16, where Japan's 14-year-old sensation, Mima Ito, will be playing Tetiana Tanya Bilenko, the Ukrainian chopper, the magical chopper who twiddles more than anybody, the twiddler, if you will. Now, this has been a very fascinating year. This is the match that I've most been excited to see. Ever since it came out yesterday in the print-ups, I said, I hope I'm commentating that match. And sure enough, here I am, Adam Bobro, alongside me, Gavin Rumgay, and we are in for a thrill of a match. Mima Ito on screen, 14 years old, world ranked number 15, and there's her coach. She's the 13th seed in this tournament, and she came out world ranked 15 after a huge tournament in Germany at the German Open winning the women's singles at the age of 14. Now, Tatiana Bilenko on screen uses long pips on the backhand, but I shouldn't say backhand. We're gonna see what color it is. I'm assuming it's the red, because she's warming up with the black. So the red side, we will consider the long pips. And here we have our head umpire, Xie Ying from China. We actually haven't seen a lot of Chinese umpires at this tournament, considering the tournament is in China. Bilenko twiddles so many times, she can attack with both the long pips and the inverted rubber. Very threatening, quick movement, low chops, plays well close to the table. Now, as far as funny rubbers go, both of these players have some tricks up their short sleeves. Mima Ito has medium pips on the backhand. While she doesn't twiddle, she does, on the other hand, attack with those medium pips also block, take the pace off the ball. I mean, you can get anything from Mimi Ito. So this is the best of seven match. Bilenko to serve, love all. And while the first point goes to Mima Ito, I will say that Bilenko has had arguably the greatest upset on the female side of this tournament, taking out Ai Fukuhara earlier, two matches before this. And I suppose as well that Fukuhara, similar style in terms of the pimple, trying to mix the pace up, sometimes trying to bring Belenko in short, then going a little bit longer, a little bit flatter. So a similar style that way, Adam. That's right, it could be a good sign for Belenko. Has some experience, although the last time these two faced, Mima Ito was just over a month ago in Almeria, Spain at the Spanish Open, and Mima Ito won four games to two over Bilenko. And out of that small, about five foot tall body, Mima Ito can show incredible power with flat hits right off the bounce and inspiration to young girls and athletes in general all around the world, especially after the German Open, which was her breakthrough tournament for sure. She's also the 2014 women's doubles champion of the World Tour Grand Finals with now 15, Mew Hirano. Crushing forehand, there it is, that's the slap shot. Leave it a little bit too high. And even though she doesn't have huge reach, look at that power. Timing and execution just on point. What will the future hold for this girl? Now, as far as other upsets and choppers, Mima Ito played against Han Ying in Germany, was down 3-0 and won four straight games. And I, I mean convincingly, very one-sided four straight games to move on. She then went on to beat two Chi oh, a Chinese player, German Shan Xiaona as well, and Feng Tianwei four games to zero. And despite losing that last point, is very much in control in the early part of game one. Rushing back into the table, Bilenko keeping the pressure on. Fast feet as a defender is a must, but coming back into the table, been very effective. We saw Juse Hyuk playing against Ma Long. That was when he was most effective, was coming back to the table. Same with Ivan Chan in the last match for women's singles. Too close to the net, Mima Ito just getting it early enough at the rise, exploiting the wide angle. They're gonna have to be deep chops. The spin variation is something that's gonna settle in, I think, for Bilenko in this match. Part of the reason she twiddles so much is for that variation and deception. 
Top of the net for a double bounce. What are you thinking, Gavin? That's exactly the shot you were speaking about, the, the dead shot. She can just suddenly change the pace. Fast shot in with a really slow one. Ito. Ito. Yeah, we've seen it. I mean, with the medium pips, they, they can serve a dual purpose. They're neither short nor long, but somewhere in between. So you can still get some good forward pace. And you can also take pace off the ball, just sort of lightly brushing. While that shot was pretty spectacular to watch, it was just a little too close to the net on the second one. And Mima Ito is so far, I think, 100% at putting those away. Now has seven game points to take game one. Beautiful backhand. And you always have to check with Bilenko. I believe that was the long pib side of the racket. But then again, she can twiddle twice in the middle of a point. And by the middle of a point, I mean before the shot comes back. I've seen it where she turns it around right after hitting. And while the ball's on its way, turns it around again. The slow motion has never been so useful on a twiddle as it is for Bilenko. Heavy spin into the body, misplayed from Bilenko with the side spin chop, and it is out. Mima Ito takes game one 11-5 to set the record straight and continue her tradition. We'll see if Tat uh, Tatiana Bilenko can change things up in game two. Don't go anywhere. So Mima Ito is going to start us off in game two with the serve. Again, Mima Ito leading 1-0. There was double twiddle and left with the long pips on the forehand side, Bilenko. We talked a little bit over break about Bilenko. Gavin, you said you've seen her play over the years a bit? Very quick footwork. And she, she works very, very hard, as you can see, obviously, in the practice hall as well. A lot of the... A lot of the defensive players, though, don't have any form of attack, but she does, and she can sometimes attack one, two, three blows in a row, which is quite unique for a defensive player. Crushing forehand again, Ito on fire. You wondered when you watched her in the German Open, she came back the next week, played the Spanish Open in Almeria, and was beaten, I believe it was the round of 16, um, lost to Yang Xiaoxin after beating Tatiana Bilenko in the round of 32. So week to week, you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes the player's hot. And as far as the attack of the defender, um, just to clarify, a lot of defenders at world class do have some form of attack, usually on a forehand. But Tatiana Bilenko can attack from both sides with either rubber, which makes her quite unique, quite threatening and difficult to read. Sometimes you wonder if the twiddling is even too much for her own good, like if it gets confusing or more difficult to play consistent shots. Right there, for example, she blocked it back as if she had inverted on the backhand, but it played off the long pips, and as you'd imagine, floats out long. What's impressed me so far is Ito's variation in shot, hitting a lot of forehands down the lines as well, which is quite unique. And when that ball sits, is sit, sitting up as well, that high one, she really moves through the ball well and jumps onto her left foot. A lot of women, when the ball goes up high, they're not that good and they're quite static on the shot, but she certainly isn't. Right, and she's definitely playing a confident and aggressive game. Serve with the long pips. Very unusual to see that. It's almost dizzying how much she twists and twiddles. And the heavy spin that time pays off having the inverted on the backhand. 
In a rally where someone hasn't just loaded the ball with topspin, it's tough to generate your own off the long pips. And there it is again, inverted on the backhand. Bit of side spin as well, and it's catching Ito off guard. It's really like a sixth sense, not in the dead person sense, but more so in the knowing what you have where. Bilenko, we could call the rain woman of table tennis, just has a magical brain ability to know where it is. She's been doing it, I think, since the age of 11. Beautiful shot with the long pip, steps in right through the ball, not counting on any friction from the rubber. Watch this one more time in slow-mo, just a little bit high. Steps in and beautiful execution, the lunge and the finish. Just missing long, but I had a feeling that shot would have been trouble for Ito. Early inverted on the backhand. Again, a very unusual shot from a defensive player to have the inverted on the backhand. She's sticking with it. She's won about, it feels like 75% of the points that she started the rally with the inverted defensive shot from the backhand. Now we're tied up at seven points each, Bilenko with the serve. And that's the least twiddling. It seems like she's found a rhythm, keeping the long pips on the forehand side and the inverted on the backhand is sticking with it for the time being. Strong receive, catches Bilenko off guard, and suddenly she's in the defensive more than she wants to be right next to the table. That's the shot. And so quick to execute. I mean, the power of Ito, such confidence to go aggressively with that forehand time and time again. That would have been another chance to have stepped around and used in the forehand. But I think that was a set play. Deliberately serve wide, expect the ball back, and then play a backhand. She was caught off guard there. Ball left a little bit too high. Just amazing how much power she has. But at this point, it is not a fluke. She has consistently shown, at least so far in this match, that she has the power on the forehand. It's really going to force Bilanko to consider the height of the ball and where she's hitting it on the table to, to avoid that crushing forehand shot. Yeah, the height, exactly. Spot on, Adam. As soon as that ball is just a touch above the net, Ito's pouncing on that. And there it is again, another pouncer to finish it 11-8. Game two goes to Mima Ito for a 2-0 lead and we'll be back for game three in the clever battle of the pipped players after this. Bilenko's going to start us off in game three. Bilenko now with the serve, down 0-2 in games. Well placed right on the body. And again, it's the power of Ito. It sounds like a book or, or a belief system, a lifestyle really, the power of Ito. We talked about it between games, Gavin, how much power she can generate confidently against these defensive shots. Usually we see much longer rallies. Bilenko had a similar experience, well, quite different experience with a similar style of play against Dai Fukuhara. And yet Ito forcing a timeout from Bilenko relatively early in the match, but depending on how many games this match goes, it could be exactly the midway point. So you were talking about the triangle that you make. Care to elaborate on that a little bit, Gavin? 
a lot of the time when, I, when I'm coaching some of the, the younger kids, the, they don't have such great timing initially until they've played for a few years. So it's important that you can try and hit near the edge of the triangle. So if you extend your hands out in front of you, right at the end of the, the triangle there, that's exactly where you want to hit. So you want to be hitting on the front part of the racket as much as you can so that you can thrust your body through the ball. A lot of players hit the ball too too close to their body, hence not hitting the ball with as much power. And for those of you who couldn't see, which is probably all of you, Gavin's fingertips were actually touching when he extended his arms. That is the triangle. And right out of the timeout, the point goes against Bilanko. Ito continuing her streak. And showing that she's not afraid to even take a ripping shot with the backhand, just punch through it for power. It's been very effective against Patricia Solia in the finals of the German Open. She did that time and time again. So far, it's not been as necessary out here. Bilenko coming back in for a big forehand to the backhand corner. We haven't seen a lot of that either. We've seen her using the backhand on the high balls. That shot, very low trajectory, not a super spinny shot, just a lot of forward. And by the end of that point, she was back with the long pips on the backhand. It's funny, the balance, the edge of the triangle, once you get out in front of that triangle, it's just such a fine line where the power lies. I know we talked about it, or at least I talked about it a bunch yesterday, that if something's way out in front of you, it's very difficult to lift. Try holding a chair out in front of you with your arms fully extended. There's a much more comfortable place to hold it, of course, closer to the body there. So if you're lifting something like heavy underspin, oh, beautiful shot off the long pip attack, even with some side spin from Bilenko, Ito comes back and counters. Look at this ball, flat hit right back. Reaction time, when she gets her driver's license, I would feel safe in the passenger seat. A rare occasion. And that's what we were talking about with the triangle, Gavin. When the ball's a little bit up on the table and closer to the net, Ito's been very comfortable to sort of maneuver around. This one was a little more to the middle of the table, so she couldn't reach it from the side. So good. Exactly. And because she rotates her body before she hits the ball, and because there's such a huge wingspan, she can hit that ball anywhere. That's the deception. At the last second, we didn't know which corner she was going to hit that to, Adam. Right. Mima Ito's game, very unpredictable. A soft, confident shot. Confident because it shows that she's willing to play it softly while Bilenko's still at the table, but Bilenko's trying to take away some of that confidence by punishing it while she's up close and does so successfully. And now Bilenko has a lead, up 7-5, two-point lead. You know, a few points ago, that crushing shot from Mima Ito, you couldn't see us, but Gavin and I both had our hands in the air with our eyes wide, like, just unbelievable. Bilenko's definitely on a roll right now. Changing things quite a bit. She's definitely been experimenting and has a large repertoire of shots to experiment with. Right. We don't see a lot of rallies won that way for Mima Ito in a pushing game near the table. Bilenko as the defender has a lot of experience with pushing. You see defender versus defender, some of the longest rallies in the game, forcing the expedite rule. And now Ito right back in, just down by one with her second serve here. Just long from the, it had, I think she had the long pips on the forehand for that shot as it floated long. For a while, she was settling into the inverted on the backhand, and I think after a few too many points that way, Ito picked up and changed her game. Come on, 
even the twiddle at the moment of the toss. It's just nonstop twiddle. I don't know if I've ever seen that, Gavin. And it's very difficult to keep twiddling because your hands do get a little bit of perspiration on them as you're playing. And after several spinny shots a little slower, back to the flat crushing shot of Mima Ito to finish the point. She just reads it so well. It's very difficult with Bilenko more than maybe anybody in the game to see what's on the ball. But not for Ito, she is the one. It was a good read from Ito there as well. A lot of the time when a defensive player is coming, steaming back into the table, they don't get as much purchase on the backspin shot. And despite missing that one, I think it's definitely the key ingredient, or one of the key ingredients in Ito's success is how well she does read the spin on the ball. But despite the way Ito's been playing from the earlier lead, 8-5, Bilenko managing to get a game point here. Left up a bit too high. On the opposite side of the table, we've seen Ito come around the backhand side quite successfully, and this time, short to the forehand. And a very well-placed serve. Half long to the forehand side with topspin. Difficult to receive, effectively anyway. And I don't know the last time we saw that. A Bilenko serve that won the point outright. You could feel that the, the threat of the Bilenko attack was there, sort of affecting the shot of Ito. Bilenko is on the board, 12-10. She takes it over Mima Ito, and after losing the first two games, we now have a 2-1 game on our hands. Don't go anywhere. Game four coming back just after this break. Now we're back for game four. Tatiana Bilenko trailing one game to two. Mima Ito in the lead. Point for point, Mima Ito has scored 32 points. Where Tatiana Bilenko has only scored 25 so far. Now even though Bilenko won that last game, I, I still feel like the more memorable shots and points were Ito's. Full extension, a slap shot. The shot before, right off the hip, reminded me of the defender Pana Agiotis Gionis yesterday hit a winner like that against Ma Long. But Ito quick to anticipate and move into the middle of the table. Takes it out wide to the forehand side for the point. What was that? A head fake? The Kobe Bryant of table tennis? Is that what we're seeing? Still looking cross court to the backhand corner. A no look shot to the short side. What's the apology for? My goodness. At 14. Not twice in a row. She made it twice in a row, but Bilenka would not let that happen to win the point. This time she anticipates it well, but still it's Ito who ends up finishing the point in success. Four to zero for Ito in this game. <laughs> Clever idea, tries for the drop. For a second I thought it was gonna be a two bouncer on the table, but it caught the net. What doesn't she have? She's got power, she's got creativity, she's got touch, control. Driver's license, that's the answer. That's what she does not have. 
she's trying to mix it up there as well. A little forehand bluff, fast forehand down the line, taking a forehand hook off the bounce. Every shot. And that shot hasn't been quite as successful for Ito so far this match. Again, in Germany, it was one of many powerful weapons, but the backhand punch shot has not been working out against Bilenko so far. And then a little backhand attack off the long pip side from Bilenko as well off the top of the net and out. As far as attacking with long pips, it's a question of shot selection. If the ball's not high enough, you can get very little spin. It's tough to make the shot. Fast long serving to the inverted backhand, comes back long. A bit of top spin there to make the ball jump out. Keep the speed on the ball, but still keep it low. You have to wonder if it's the confusion of what's where. We had the backhand, a bit of side spin and chop, and then the forehand with the long pips on it. We don't see Ito miss a lot of those, moving in quick to play the wide angle. Fortunate for Bilanco though. But they're good misses, Adam. You know, ev every time she goes for these, it's good posture, she's hitting through the ball. Okay, it's a small table, table tennis. Clever idea again, throws the body fake. Looks like she's going to the short side of the table behind Bilenko instead, but she misses it and there's the touch. And that's a fun slow motion shot. Despite that moment of disappointment, in general, she'll come right back and she'll be shaking her head positively. I think this is a tactic of the Japanese team from a psychological standpoint. A lot of positive up and down, yes, ready to go. Nothing on it. Played like it was gonna go straight down and the ball pops up. Excellent spin variation from Bilenko and the Japanese player Mima Ito now has a timeout in her corner. I think that's a good time. If I remember correctly, I feel like Ito was way ahead in the start. Didn't she go up 4-0? She was ahead, but then it was just a few of those backhands. That, that's where there has been a little bit of indecision in our game is on that wing. As soon as she's playing forehands, she definitely looks like the more aggressive player. And definitely is despite both rackets having pips on one side and inverted on the other. Bilenko, the defensive player. Ito stays nice and close to the table. And this is something that, while playing at a German Open, a Super Series with so many players there, including several Chinese players, while not the top Chinese players, still several very strong players, Ito's position right at the back of the table, creativity and off the bounce play makes her a real threat to anybody in the world when she's playing well. So Bilenko takes it back from down 0-4 to up 7-6. Don't forget you can submit your questions on Twitter, hashtag AskTheCommentator. Gavin and I would love to have a conversation with you about table tennis, what's happening here in this match, anything you want. So send in those questions. And now eat those back, 7-6. to six. Bit of a problem again. The placement from Bilenko deep on the table not making it quite as easy for Ito to play the wide ball and really exploit the angle on the opening. Break off the top of the net but can't take advantage. Touch of Ito keeps it well in play. Such a soft reaction shot. Not easy to do, but then again, nothing Mima Ito does is easy. It just looks like it for her, but the backhand has not been easy. I don't recall, I mean, maybe she made it once this match. I just can't remember it. And now we're at eight points each. And that's a difficult shot with the long pips. She has two, she twiddled twice in that. Hit a few chops from the forehand side with the long pips, but that flat hit back is very tough if you don't have some traction on the rubber. 
A good lesson for you guys and girls at home. Shot selection, looking to spin up two or three shots first before you go for the long, big hit. And we talked about your racket sport expertise yesterday, but that shot, much like in tennis, hitting it behind the player, the momentum of Bilenko was moving out to the forehand side and Ito just a little bit behind Bilenko took the point. Now two game points for Ito. Ripping forehand to the short side of the table, clips the net and goes long. The timeout has been effective so far for Ito, but we'll take that back if Bilenko can take this game. Not with that one, the ball left too high and you could see the look on her face. It's a finishing no look shot for Mima Ito again with the head fake. Touch right there with the long pips left too high. The head turns a little bit after the body. We love it. And we'll be back where Mima Ito is leading three games to one over Tetiana Bilanko of Ukraine just after this break. And the players are back quick for the start of game five. Mima Ito leading three games to one after barely escaping 11-9 over Tatiana Bilenko. Too close to the net. Mima Ito's got the forehand to finish that time and time again. Despite a little bit of trouble on some of the balls closer to the net, wide on the forehand side. That one right there is going nowhere near Bilenko. Break off the top of the net. It was tough to tell. It looked like Bilenko gave up for a moment, like she still could have reached it. Even in the replay, it seems a little odd. Oh, in the back edge of the table, Bilenko at full extension. Looked like she released the racket from the hand just a little bit. See this one more time. Yes, yeah, she almost drops the racket, holding to the very edge. And then again, gets the very edge of the table to take the point. Down near the ground, the body language of Bilenko. You can see a little apology from Mima Ito. Seems like it's definitely getting in the head of Bilenko. Natural to be frustrated when your opponent has good fortune. That shot right there is not a decision. That is an off shot. That is a, it is an in-between shot, standing up straight, sort of flat hitting back wide to the forehand. Difficult to make a good shot while you're on the move, especially while you're backing up instead of moving side to side to reach a ball. It's one of the few times in the match so far that Ito's not had good posture when she's moved to the wide forehand. Shoulders just leaning back on impact. Again, smart play. <laughs> Might have been a head fake there. Either way, very smart play right off the bounce. We'll see it again, the first one, and as it comes back, yep, the head follows late. There's no telling where she's gonna go with it. If anyone asks you if a head fake can help in table tennis, I think the answer is right here on the screen. That being said, it shouldn't be the priority for practice. Suddenly there's the head fake academy of Austria, China, Germany, Japan. Right at the baseline of the table with the inverted rubber from the backhand side of Bilenko. That was a recipe for success for a bit in game two.
Excellent backhand attack off the long pips to the open forehand side of the court for Bilenko. See this one more time, deep on the table, stays close. Almost looks like a fencing lunge the way she just comes in and jabs at it. Two bounces on the table, are you kidding me? After all that that Bilenko went through, my goodness, at full extension from both sides, the point that doesn't end eventually does with a two bounce drop shot on the table. No net at all, soft enough touch, could have caught an egg with her bare hands on that. And after one of the most amazing points we've seen in this tournament, quick one to follow up, that's the nature of the sport, it's all worth one point. This time, instead of playing wide to the forehand, Ito smashing it right into the body. Got to be a surprise for Bilenko. It's like code breaking out here. Anytime you think you see a pattern, the pattern quickly changes. Still, we're tied up at seven points each. Again, flat hit right into the body. Bilenko trying to get the body out of the way. Does a decent job of it, but still a very difficult shot from on the body with the forehand side, and it goes long. We're so impressed with the shots from Ito, it almost feels like it's a blowout, but it's neck and neck, one point. That one gets away. We don't see a lot of those, but again, spin variation and definitely the placement. It was deep on the table and low enough. Ito not able to apply the flat hit that's worked so magically throughout this match. Ball enters the court and Bilenko quickly acknowledges, as does Ito, that it's a let and a replay it. That one, it's funny. If it's shallow, it's dangerous, but if it's really shallow, it's so tough to reach, and especially at about five feet tall for Ito to get that without bumping the table. That shot's going to be very difficult to get next time as well if it happens again. And from a confidence standpoint, Bilenko needs to be in the right headspace. Of course, it's frustrating when you could have had 10-8. You make a careless mistake, something that feels a little bit more simple that you know you can count on yourself to do better then. But now it's Mima Ito with two serves and a chance to win the match. This time the counter is with the inverted rubber on the forehand side, but it goes up and out, and it is match point for Mima Ito of Japan. Oh my goodness! Way up high, the smash so wide, almost running into the scorekeeper's booth, and the ball just barely misses on the retrieve from Ito. Fast footwork from Bilenko to get around the table on that, but what a crowd thrilling point. And we're back at deuce. One match point saved for Bilenko now with the serve. So strong, the touch shot, the shot that impressed me most was right off the bounce. Ito keeping it nice and short, so much confidence and control, now has her second match point. You feel here she's got to use her forehand, serve and get in. And that is it, it is the forehand of Ito in a spin shot despite all the flat hits we've seen. What an outstanding performance. Four games to one, Mima Ito in a thrilling match. This did not disappoint. One of many outstanding matches this tournament and definitely a highlight for me, Gavin. Mima Ito, 11 points to five, 11 to eight.
losing 10-12, 11-9, and 12-10 in the fifth, will be moving on to the women's singles quarterfinals at the age of 14 years old. What a show and a great tournament, tournament rather, for Tetiana Tanya Bilenko of Ukraine. Expect to see more of her too. Despite being 31 years old, I still think her career is on the up and up, Gavin. Definitely is. Fantastic match. And yet 14 years old, progressing to a quarter final of a world championship. I think she's got an unbelievable future ahead of her and possibly even in this tournament going the whole week. Maybe, maybe a chance for that to happen. Now there hasn't been a lot of conversation because he's not present on the pro tour, but since we brought up young players from Japan, Tomokazu Harimoto, the 11 year old who beat Jan Lundqvist and Omar Asar in the Swedish Invitational. Unbelievable, ended up playing the finals. He's 11 years old and he's not grown like a 16 year old. He looks like an 11 year old, but he plays out of his mind. And we'll see if that was a one tournament deal or if he can continue. But Mima Ito after winning the German Open so far has shown that this is not just a, a stroke of luck, that she is on her way up. Well, Gavin, it's been a pleasure working with you again and uh, look forward to the next match. We got two tables in action here, so stick around. You're watching the 2015 Koros World Table Tennis Championships in Sudan.